Hey, hey party people. In this video, I'm gonna go over the components of a basic industrial sewing machine. Something that makes a good, strong, straight, single needle stitch. They're called lock stitch machines. And I know, there are so many machines out there, so many brands, so many models, but I tell you what, single needle lock stitch to single needle lock stitch, single needle lock stitch, say that 10 times fast. The, those machines, you know, within this category, many of the components are identical or similar. And so, you know, learning this video, learning this machine, you'll be able to figure out, you know, different brands and different models in this machine category, the single needle lock stitch. Of course, cover stitch machines, sergers, they're all going to be totally different. This is a Juki DDL 8700 and I've had this machine for 10 years and it sews as beautifully as the day I got it. Industrial machines come set into the table like this and you can see the motor underneath it, right? It's a big strong metal frame. They do not come with lamps. Mm, I think some do. Mine did not. The machine does come with a thread stand. That comes pretty standard. These machines do not come with chairs, so you gotta get one of those. Before I continue, I would like to say that this is the number one rule of every factory floor. There are no open toe shoes on the factory floor. You wanna keep all your toes, right? There's a lot of heavy machinery things, lots of people using scissors and blades and tools. Closed toe shoes made of a strong material are the best for the factory floor. All right, back to the machine. There's your foot pedal to make the machine run. That black pedal there, you work it with your knee. Okay, you push it out with your knee. And when you push it out, can you see that? I'm trying to be my own cameraman, <laughs> narrator at the same time. When you push that black pedal out with your knee, your sewing foot raises. Now there's also this thing back here where you can also lift your sewing foot. And if you're doing something complicated, this one is better so it just keeps your sewing foot up while you're doing some stuff and then you can pop it back down. Most machines come with a little drawer like this. I keep sewing feet and needles and bobbins and such in here. These sewing machines need oil to run. Number one, you need the correct oil for your machine. Okay. Number two, you need the correct amount of oil. And I'm just pushing firmly. And the oil reservoir is in here. Do you see those lines where it says high, low, and how my oil is nice, comfortably in between those two lines? Now you may be asking, Zoe, how often do I fill the oil? Honestly, it really depends on how often you use your machine. This pretty baby's name is Alma. We're gonna go left to right on Alma, and then I'm gonna show you how to thread the machine, and I'm gonna show you how to wind a bobbin. Left to right, we have the needle and the sewing foot. Now, needles, you definitely need specific needles for your industrial single needle. You know, you don't need different needles for a brother versus a Juki versus, you know, but you do need them for industrials. They're different than home machines and they're different from overlock needles. This is a needle for an industrial single needle and these are needles for an overlock. Do you see the length difference? So yeah, you definitely need different needles. When you put the needle into your machine, you must put it in a specific way. Do you see how the thread is going left to right? Overlock, you thread front to back, but it, single needle, you thread left to right. Hello camera, please focus. Do you see this groove, the long groove sitting over the eye, including the eye? That's gonna be on the left hand side. Do you see how on this side, there's just like this little divot? That's gonna be on the right-hand side. So it's gonna hang like this. Do you see the divot on the right-hand side? And your thread will go left to right. Here's the little screw that will release the needle. 
here's the little screw that will release the foot. And that's why I have screwdrivers and such in my little sewing machine drawer. Pop that up. And then you can just... The thing about the knee pedal is it makes the foot rise higher. Anyway, so this is your standard sewing machine foot. It's broad, it's uneven. The left-hand side has the longer toe. This is a foot for sewing invisible zippers. This white one is Teflon and for sewing leather. It's super duper smooth so that the leather will kind of glide through. And yeah, you can sew leather on an industrial single needle. I will sew thinner leathers like lambskin, pig splits, cow plunge, which is thinner than the back hide of cow. And if you're doing, you know, many layers of a thicker cow skin, you're going to want a walking foot, but this one will handle garment weight leathers. So I do use this Teflon foot for that. And this foot helps you roll, do rolled hems. You like sew your fabric and feed your fabric into that little roll thing and it rolls your fabric as you sew. So there are a lot of other feet you can put on here. I don't have that many. Make sure it's pushed all the way to the top before you start screwing it in tight. Underneath here are feed dogs. And as you sew, they move like this and they help you push the fabric along. In here is the bobbin. You can reach in here. It won't release unless you pull this up. So. Stick your hand in there, put your thumb under here, and pop it out. Now this is comprised of your bobbin full of thread and your bobbin case. Now bobbins, you can buy a million of these at any sewing supply store. Bobbin cases are technically considered a machine part and harder to find. What you wanna do is stick your bobbin in there and you don't just like leave the thread loose. You have to wind it in your bobbin case. So find this section. You wanna push the thread through here and through here and let it dangle from this hole, okay? And it should gently dangle. It shouldn't unravel. But of course that may change depending on what material you're using. So let's talk about tension. This is the tension dial for the top thread, okay? So if you start getting loops, thread loops as you're sewing, things are too loose, you wanna tighten things up. If the thread looks like it's just like digging into the material because the stitches are so tight, then you wanna loosen things up. And the tension could also be a culprit of the bobbin tension. If you wanna manipulate the bobbin tension, what you need to do do you see this little screw here? You wanna tighten and loosen the screw as necessary. And that's why I have this super itty bitty screwdriver. Let me stick that in there. I'm not gonna mess with it. I like the tension as it is. I just wanna show you how I did it, okay? So make sure the thread is coming out of this hole. And then I kinda of hold onto it like this. Pop it back in there, voila. To get the bobbin thread up, you're going to have to basically sew one stitch to get the needle to go down and pick it up and bring it up, right? Now, you want to use your hand wheel, but you can't use it without pushing down on the pedal. You don't want to push it down so hard that you're actually sewing. You just want to, like, gently push down enough. You shouldn't even hear the sound change. And you're going to... Pull the hand wheel forward and it'll loop that bobbin thread and you should be able to pull it out. If you try to manipulate the hand wheel without pushing down on the pedal, it won't move. These grooves here are your seam allowance. So if you're sewing something with a half inch seam allowance, you want your the edge of your fabric to skim along this line. This 
is your oil window. I actually don't know the technical term for this, but when your machine is running and you have sufficient oil, you should see oil splashing in this window. Did you see that? Okay, you kind of have to run the machine a lot to see it sometimes. All right, so this here is your stitch length dial. And, you know, these numbers are going to be different machine to machine. I've seen some that do zero to 10. This one does zero to five. You know, stitches per length dictated on a tech pack is a fairly common thing. And you want to make sure that you have the right stitches per length. You want, like, if I want to do big basting stitches, you know, to check on something, I'll crank it up to five. If I want really small stitches for a very open weave fabric, then I'm going to make this really small. I don't think I've ever uh, sewed at a zero. I don't think I've ever sewn anything like that, but you might need something like that for like a tool, a net, something where you wanna make sure you're catching and creating as many stitches as possible to catch all those holes. And then this is your back tack bar and you hold this down. There's nothing where you can just set it or anything. You have to hold it down while you do your backward stitches. When do you want backward stitches? When you are starting or finishing a seam and you want to make sure that they don't unravel. Again, this is your hand wheel and you move it forward like this. And this is your bobbin winder. All right, let's wind up a bobbin. So here we go. First, you take your cone. I chose a red one so y'all can see what I'm doing. And then thread that hole along the thread bar. You see that? Pull that thread up, bring it back down. Now we're gonna thread the bobbin winder which is attached to the side of the machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the thread and you're going to slide it into this hole here. And then you're going to wrap it from the back to the front, back to front like this. And then you're gonna take your bobbin and you're gonna wind it a few times, just enough so that it doesn't unravel if you let go, right? And then you're gonna take the rest of your thread and you're gonna put it through one of these holes, like so. You're going to stick it on the winder and you're gonna push this out. Make sure your bobbin it goes as far as it'll go before this thing stops it, right? Basically, when you're winding the bobbin, the sewing machine also thinks it's sewing. So if you leave your needle threaded, it'll just start sewing, it'll go crazy, and there's no fabric back here, it's just gonna go nuts, right? So what you wanna do is unthread your needle. You wanna take your bobbin and case out. You want to raise your foot. And you want to hold on to this thread because when it's when the when you start revving it, the thread is going to start flapping all over the place. You want to hold on to it because otherwise you'll just get this messy tangled knot. You also want to hold on to this thread so that as this starts spinning, it doesn't just start going flapping all over the place, right? Okay, and hold down your pedal. If you feel like it's uneven, here we go. When the thread starts touching the, the metal part here, it'll release automatically. If yours doesn't, just fill to approximately there. Okay, you don't want it over full. All right, now let's thread the machine. So this part comes up easily, <laughs> but don't lose it. It's got a tension disc here and a hole here. So we're gonna... Wrap it around, we're gonna go through the hole. We're gonna go right to left, and then we're gonna wrap around, and we're gonna go right to left again, and then we're gonna go around this tension disc, and then around this wire. Do you see this wire? We're gonna hook into that wire, we're gonna go under this lever, do you see this lever? 
it has a hole and it goes threaded right to left. Make sure the thread gets hooked back here and then we're moving it back behind this wire so it kind of stays out of the way. And then there's a hole here over the needle and we're threading it front to back and then we thread the needle left to right. Bum, ba, da, ba. If you need to re-thread the machine with a different color thread, do not re-thread the machine all over again. Just knot this off, just knot it. Once is fine, make sure it's good and tight. Unthread the needle, cause the knot won't go through the needle eye and just lightly push pull. This is where most of the tension is. So open this and it'll come right through. Clip the knot and then thread your needle. So that's it y'all. Uh, those are the basic components and operational what's it's on a basic industrial single needle lock stitch. Uh, please do hit the thumbs up button if you learned something new today. Drop me your questions in the comment section below, but please do keep in mind that I'm not a machine expert. I do know how to sew. I'm comfortable around industrials, but I don't know like, oh, what are the minute differences for Tina Bernina and a brother and what model is better? Like I'm not a machine expert, okay? So please do keep that in mind when you ask your questions. Share, subscribe, comment, you know, all those good things. And listen, industrials are loud. Industrials require a, a more subtle footwork on the machine. And, you know, they can be a little bit scary because of those two things. But listen, the very first day of my sewing class in fashion school, I messed up my machine so bad that... I may have cried, maybe. <laughs> and, you know, nobody in the school could fix my mess up. Not any of the seniors, not our on-campus handyman. They actually had to get a person from a shop to fix my mistake. And yet, I finished that class with an A. And trust me, it was not easy. So, what is it that I always say? It's hard because it's hard not because there's anything wrong with you. And if your first one sucks, you're right on track. And trust me, my first assignment was 20 muslin squares. Do you know how hard it is to mess up muslin squares? I do. <laughs> All right, hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic, and I will see you in the next video.